Hey guys, welcome to another DaVinci Resolve editing tutorial and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use the color match tool to get the perfect colors and exposures inside of DaVinci Resolve. It's fairly easy to do, I'm going to be showing you how to do it manually and I'm going to be showing you a really easy way to do it. So um, yeah, so before I get started if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay notified for my next video. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and yeah, let's get into it. So there are a few scenarios where you would use one of these like multicam ND filters because sometimes they give off a slight color cast so you'd want to be able to fix that and mixed color temperatures like in this second clip. So I'm using for the backlight I'm using a tungsten light and the main source of light is a daylight color temperature light bouncing off of an off-white wall to give it a bit of a diffused look. So yeah, let's start color correcting this. So I'm going to go to the mixed color temperature first because this is going to be a little bit more problematic than this clip here. So, all right, so we're in the color tab. Now we just go down to color match and by default it's on x right color checker classic and scroll down to whichever color checker you're using. I'm using the data color spider checker so I'm going to click that. As you can see it's not doing much. Just click over here and go to color chart and we'll see our color chart. So it's going to represent what we see here. Cool so let's just adjust this. So it doesn't matter if your color checker is upside down or to the side. As long as you align the little squares um, to the colors like so, uh, you won't have any problems with doing this technique. So let's just fix this up. Now let's go to our source gamma. And if you shot this on a picture profile that already has contrast and saturation baked into the camera profile, you can just leave it as Rec 709. Or if you shot it flat like myself here, um, just choose which camera you shot it on. I shot it on the Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera, so I'll just choose Blackmagic Design. We can leave the target gamma and target color space at Rec 709. Now the color temperature, you wanna adjust the color temperature to the main source of light. I shot this clip with a 5600 color temperature setting on the camera and the lighting, except for the backlight. And then all we have to do is click match and I can already tell that this is a little bit on the warmer side. So to fix that, let's just create a new node, a new corrector. Let's just pipe it in. I'm gonna turn this off. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go over to power window and I'm gonna to go to the window tab and I'm going to check the pen tool. I'm gonna to scroll over because this is double sided so I can get this nice white card on this side and I'm just going to mask over. If you can try to avoid putting your hand or any objects in front of this card but you can just crop it out like that so it doesn't really matter. And what we want to do is we want to isolate the rest of the clip so we don't see um, all of this sort of stuff. We just want to see this white card so to do that we'll just make sure our highlights are selected then we'll go over to our scopes and we'll go to our vector scope. We want to make sure this dot in the circle is in the direct middle because we can see that it's going towards the warmer side instead of being directly in the middle. It's a really simple fix. You can do it a few different ways. You can use the curves or you can go over to your color wheel and you can do auto. So I'm just going to move this out of the window and get this eyedropper tool and I'm going to put it on I'll put it on the second square and you can see that it's adjusted the white to be correctly white but our shadows are still a little bit warm so we can fix that by going to our waveform. As you can see there's a little bit of a color shift at the bottom. We want it to be as white as possible. We don't want to see any colors so to fix that we can go to blue, create a little point. We'll go to blue and we'll bring it up to green the blue up a bit about there and then I'm going to go to the red channel and I'm going to create another point here 
We'll bring it down. And that's looking pretty good for the shadows. Now, I also want to adjust. You can choose to create um, a new node if you want to, but just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to keep the white balance and exposure in the same node. So let's adjust this exposure. So let's go over to Y. And what this will do is it'll push the exposure up without shifting the colors. Go about here. We want to bring the blacks, which is here, to just above zero because we don't want it clipping black. So I prefer to have it around here. I'm just going to leave my whites here because I don't want to crush it too much. So I'm going to get out of that. I'm going to uncheck the highlights and I'm going to go over to the window and I'm going to uncheck the pen tool. So now we've got our white balance and exposure set. And then I'm going to create another node. Let's pop that there. And then we're just going to bring this back to the start. And then I'm just going to click our pen tool. And then I'm going to mask around these colors here. Awesome, let's just put the highlights back on. Let's go back to our scopes. Uh, let's make it bigger. So then I'm going to go from waveform to vector scope. So we've got different spikes on this wheel. So we've got a yellow spike, green and blue. And we want to match it up to this green square here, then yellow to the yellow square and red to the red square and so on. So let's just go, let me just move this up here. Let's just go to our curves and then we're going to go to the second dot, which is hue versus hue. And let's just create a few points along the color spectrum of red, yellow, and green, and so on. And then I'm going to start with red and we want to get it into the middle. So that's good there. Just the yellow. All right, so this is looking good. I'm just gonna get out of that. Then let's click highlight. Let's go back to our window and then uncheck it. And now we've got correct colors. And we wanna check that the skin tones are looking good because that's also a very important thing that we wanna check as well. I'm just gonna add another node, another corrector node. And Let's go to our qualifier and then we'll go to the qualifier section here and let's just click and drag and select a good range of skin tones. Let's check our highlight. Now let's check that we've got the correct skin tone. So we'll go back to our scopes again, go back to our vector scope. And you want the skin tones to be in between yellow and red. So we can do that by going over to the icon next to vector scope and we'll just check show skin tone indicator. Just get out of that. So this line here is where we want to hit for good perfect skin tones. And my skin tones are a little bit on the yellow side. Might have a bit more. I might just select a little bit more of a range here so and get a better sense of it. Then all we gotta do is go back to our curves. We want to make a point for yellow and red so let's do that yellow and red so we want to go in the middle and we'll adjust it so it's hitting the line so i'm adding a bit more red into my skin which is looking good there let's take the highlight off and there we go so yeah that's how we color match an image i'm going to go to the first clip and depending on your lighting situation um, it's probably going to be easier or harder since we had a mixed lighting situation here um, It makes it a little bit harder to get accurate colors So this one should be easier. So I'm just going to quickly show you I shot this with um, a Bit of a cooler color temperature just for the sake of this tutorial. So I'm going to apply a lot 
And as you can see, this is on the cool side of the image. It's not exactly tungsten, but it's it's like in between. And we can fix that. I'm just going to reset the node. And I'm going to go back to the color match. And by default, it's going to go back to the X-Rack Color Checker Classic. I'm just going to check the uh, Data Color Spider Checker. And I'm going to go Color Chart. I'm going to change this to Blackmagic Design Film. I'm going to leave the color temperature where it is because this is roughly the color temperature for an overcast sky. So I'm just going to leave that and I'm going to click match. And as you can see here, it's looking pretty good, the colors. I'm actually quite happy with this match that I have here. My skin tones are looking nice and the color balance looks pretty well balanced here so we don't have to do anything further you can do the same technique as we did in the previous clip you don't really need to for this one if anything you could probably adjust skin tones so let's just go to the qualifier let's get our skin tone so yeah if you found this video helpful don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay notified for my next video uploads. And I'll see you guys next time.